this video we will learn how to solve simple numerical problems of the simple pendulum. So in the last video we stated that the relationship of the time period with effective length was that t is proportional to the root of l and the relationship of time period with the acceleration due to gravity was that t is inversely proportional to g. And when we combine these two relationships, we get the equation t equals to 2 pi under root l by g. So let's start with one immediate application of this formula. And that application is, what is the effective length of a second pendulum? Now in a second pendulum, we know that the time period is equal to 2 seconds and that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square. And the formula that we are going to use is of course t equals to 2 pi under root l by g. So we will start by squaring both the sides. And after squaring both the sides, we make l the subject. And after that, when we replace the values, we get l as 0 0.994 meters which is equal to 99.4 centimeters and that means that the effective length of a second pendulum is 99.4 centimeters which is approximately equal to 1 meter. Now this becomes very complicated and as I promised we will be actually solving some simple numerical problems of the simple pendulum. So let's look at how we can simplify all this. So let's say we have a pendulum 1 whose time period t1 is equal to 2 pi under root l1 by g1 and we have another pendulum 2 whose time period t2 equals to 2 pi under root l2 by g2. So the ratio of the time periods t1 by t2 would be equal to the square root of l1 g2 divided by l2 g1. Now, if both the pendulums are on the same planet, it would mean that g1 and g2 would be equal, which means that t1 upon t2 would be equal to the square root of l1 upon l2. So these are the two formulas that we can use all the time in order to solve problems. So let's solve one simple problem first. And the problem is that a pendulum of length 36 cm has a time period of 1.2 seconds. So what will be the time period of another pendulum whose length is 81 cm? So now we have some data. L1 is 36 cm, L2 is 81 cm, T1 is 1.2 seconds, so what is T2? So the formula that we are going to use is t1 by t2 equals to under root l1 by l2 and then we make t2 the subject and then we replace the values. When we replace the values, we get t2 equals to 1.8 seconds. So simple. Let's solve another simple problem. A pendulum is taken to a planet where the acceleration due to gravity is four times that of the earth. What happens to its time period? So here, because it is the same pendulum, L1 would be equal to L2. And the acceleration due to gravity on that planet G2 would be equal to 4G1 because that is equal to four times the acceleration due to gravity on the earth. And the formula that we are going to use is t1 by t2 equals to the square root of l1 g2 upon l2 g1. So we replace the values and then we get t1 upon t2 equals to 2. In other words, t2 is equal to t1 upon 2. And what does that mean? It means that the time period of the pendulum on that particular planet would reduce to half that on the earth. So I guess with these two examples, you should be in a position to solve any numerical problem related to comparing the time periods of 
two pendulums. And now, the summary of this video. For any pendulum, the time period is given by the equation t equals to 2 pi under root L by G. The effective length of a second's pendulum is 99.4 centimeters, almost equal to 1 meter. The ratio of the time period of two pendulums T1 by T2 equals to the square root of L1 G2 upon L2 G1. For a given place where the acceleration due to gravity is equal, the ratio of the time period for two pendulums T1 by T2 equals to the square root of L1 by L2. And for the same length, the ratio of time periods of two pendulums on different planets T1 by T2 equals to the square root of G2 by G1. So that's all in this video and in this chapter. In the next video, we will begin with a new chapter and that is motion in one dimension.